Welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. Halfway through last year, I sold my Nikon D500 and I moved over and bought the Nikon Mirrorless Z62. And I've been very happy with this. But one thing that I noticed was peculiar was there was no calibration function on my camera. The Nikon D500, the Nikon D7500 had a calibration function on the camera. Today, I want to show you how I went about calibrating my Nikon Z62 to the 200 to 500 to get pin sharp photos. So how did I calibrate my Nikon Z62 when there is no calibration tool function on the camera? Like I stated that the D500 had and the Nikon D7500 had. Well, I could have gone out and bought a calibration tool, but that would have been quite costly and I go like, there are better ways. And I thought about it and I go like, well, I'm going to calibrate it using these three fruit juice containers. And the way I did it was I put the camera on the tripod with the lens and I set up these three containers around eight to 10 meters away from me. They weren't all in a line. The middle container was set further forward. The one on the left was set around a centimeter back. The one on the right was set about two centimeters back because that way I could see whether the lens was forward focusing or whether the lens was back focusing because this is the problem sometimes with FX lenses. Now I've got to state that if you're using the Z62, Z72 with FX lenses, your lenses might be great. I have the Nikon 24 to 85 and those lenses are pin sharp but I found that the 200 to 500 I thought was sharp but when I looked closely at the photos that I was taking at 500 mils, it looked like, are they really sharp or are they just off? It's very hard to tell. And this is why I decided to test whether my lens was accurate at 200 and whether the lens was accurate at 500. Because even though the Z cameras, Z6, Z7, don't have that calibration tool inside, what they do offer is that you can calibrate your lens at two different focal lengths unlike the calibration tools on the digital SLRs where you're just given the option of choosing one focal length. So you can try to calibrate at 200 and 500, but then you've got to even up to see which number you choose. If you shoot at 500, well, you're going to say, oh, I'm just going to shoot at 500. But if you're shooting 200, 350, 500, then you might decide, well, I'm going to take an average of them. The Z6, the Z7s, they have the option that you can set wide and telephoto. Now I will show you how I did it by going inside the menu of my Z62 to show exactly how I went about and then I'll show you the photos and how I saved the settings at the end. So I went to the menu and from the camera icon I went down all the way to the spanner. Then I went across and I went down until I got to the AF fine tune options. You can see on my camera here it's set to on. If you haven't fine-tuned a lens before on your Z camera it will be set to off but I've fine-tuned lenses before so it's set to on. I go across and I come down to fine-tune and save lens. So I go across here and you can see both settings wide and tele are set to zero. So what I did I started with wide and I went all across to minus 20 then went to tele and did the same thing went to minus 20. And now I started taking photos at the telephoto, which is 500 mils. So I took a photo at minus 20, came down to minus 15, took a photo, minus 10, took a photo, minus 5, took a photo, and took a photo at zero. I stopped here and I checked. I wanted to see whether at zero the photo was pin sharp. And it didn't quite look pin sharp. And I go like, maybe I need to go more. Maybe I need to go to plus. Maybe my lens is back focusing. Now this is something I forgot to mention is forward and back focusing because at minus 20 it's forward focusing. At plus it is back focusing. So imagine my finger is my subject. Forward focusing is your focus point is in front of my finger. Back focusing is the focus is behind your subject. So I went back to minus five and they're like well it's bang on. It meant that my camera was forward focusing at minus five. They're like, beauty, I know it has to be minus five. So I reset the camera to minus five. Then I went up to wide and I did the same thing again. So I brought the lens into 200 mils, 
focused on my subject, then I start taking photos at minus 20, at minus 15, at minus 10, at minus 5, at 0. At 0, I stopped again and I looked. It's a bit close, but remember at 200 mils, I've got to zoom in a bit. And I was just looking through the viewfinder here and I go like, am I really sharp? So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go to plus 5 and see whether that image was sharper. When I got to plus 5 and I looked and I like, hang on a minute, now the one on the right here is sharper than the one on the middle. And I'm like, okay, well, I know that it can't be plus 5. I looked back at the one at minus 5 and it was still not as sharp. So I realized that zero was perfect. My lens was only forward focusing on the telly at 500 mils, not on the wide angle. So you're like, beauty. I just brought the setting back down to zero on wide. And now I knew that those two settings were correct. But that was just looking through the viewfinder. Before I save anything, I want to make sure that everything is correct. So I shut the camera off, took the SD card, went on my computer, downloaded all the photos because I shot all these photos in JPEG to make it very easy to look at. And I zoomed in on all the photos and I'll show you the photos now. And I looked at the photo at 500 mils at minus 20, at minus 15, at minus 10, at minus five, and at zero. And I could see that the way I'd looked on the LCD screen was correct. Minus five was the sharpest image. Then I looked at the photos taken at 200 mils. Again, minus 20, minus 15, minus 10, minus five, zero. Check zero and I like it. That was pretty sharp. Looked at the plus five and I like, no, I can see I've gone past back to zero. Then I looked at minus five and I judged that the zero was the sharpest. Now this image isn't as sharp as the image taken at 500 mil because I've cropped in the image at 200 mils and I was really looking at it and I could see that it was the sharpest, not pin sharp. You have to understand it wasn't pin sharp, but it was the sharpest between minus five, zero and plus five. So I said, okay, I am correct. Zero was the correct number. I went back outside, got onto my camera. These are my correct settings. I clicked OK. Then I turned AF fine tune. Now you can see down the bottom, it has list save values. This is if you're having more than one lens and I can click to the right and you can see my list values for lenses is just one, the Nikon 200 to 500 mil. If you have more FX lenses that need fine tuning, you can do this. And the camera, once it's listed on the values here, especially if they're Nikon lenses, the camera will detect the lens. So if I have a Nikon FX 70 to 200 or like my 24 to 85, I do the calibration. And when I put the lens on my camera, it will detect saying, okay, well, you've set up fine tune for this lens. It will swap. Let's say if it was number two, it will swap to number two. So that is how I've set up my Nikon Z62 to the Nikon 200 to 500. So thanks for watching. If you found value in the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Really helps me out. Stay safe, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time.